Hey again guys, welcome back. So two episodes ago we took my little handwritten uh, schematic and put it into KiCad's schematic editor. From there, last episode, we changed the, or we added footprints to each component so that it would make sense in the real world when we're trying to place them on a PCB. So that's where we are right now. And I think now we can swap this onto a board. So we'll just click this, run PCB new to layout printed circuit board. Let's hope this works. And that definitely opened on another window. Okay, so that's PCB new here. And we'll click update PCB from schematic. Uh, keep existing symbols. Yep, that's good. And update PCB. Netlist update successful. I think everything went well. And here is our PCB. In potentia at least. So you see now we have everything selected here. But this is all our pieces. So we've got everything we need here. We have our triple five timer. Oh, everything is uh, Q1. That's our transistor. The pot, diodes, etc. So let's try to make this a bit more cohesive. So here I'm just sort of moving the components around. The, the whole point is those uh, white lines there called the rat's nest. And the, the point is to kind of move your components um, so that the, the rat's nest, which is the connections, are not crossing each other so much. So you want to kind of design in a way that, you know, it'll make the fewest crossover tracks. I'm also thinking of things like the screw terminals. I want them to be hanging over the edge, so I don't want them in the middle of my design. And things like the potentiometer. I also want the potentiometer to be hanging over the edge. If possible too, you notice I put the uh, screw terminals close to each other, so at least kind of all of the interface of the board is all together. It's like unwinding a uh, knotted rope, basically. And you, uh, yeah, just work at it until it looks pretty. There's no magic to it. Okay. Okay. I think that's not too bad. I think we're going to try to lay this out. It's probably not a good idea for uh, beginners, such as myself, to try to route traces on such a tiny area. But I think in this case, I'm going to try. And if I fail, I fail. I mean, I don't know what to, what to tell you. All right, so I'm going to kind of Okay, so that is what that is. This is the front silk screen. The blue stuff is what's going to show. Um, don't need FCRTYD. No, don't need that. Back. Uh, fab and Fab. Don't need that. So now we're looking at it a little bit more concisely. So it should be load netlist. Please choose a valid netlist file. I thought I had it. There we go. Update PCB. Yes. Close. Okay. Go Control S. I'm gonna save this. So this is our sort of initial little circuit here. Now I'm going to start and connect these things together. I've read many tutorials about this, but I think the consensus kind of is you route all your pads sort of horizontally on the front layer and then vertically in the back layer. But I think I want to try to make this a single layer PCB. So I'm going to go here edge cuts, select the edge cuts, and I'm going to cut out my PCB, 
So we probably want to keep a good distance away from the edge. Like this. Uh, simply because we're going to be using kind of cheaper fabs to make our PCBs. And, oh, there we go. Yeah, we're going to be using cheaper fabs to make our PCBs, so it can't be too fancy or else they just won't do it. And here goes the routing the tracks. Well, talk about failure. Um, I definitely wanted this to be a single-sided board, but um, it just doesn't work that way. Plus, uh, here I'm just experimenting, right? I'm, I'm still learning. So basically, when you click um, the wire tool and you click a pad, it shows you all of the pads that it needs to connect to, as well as those white sort of rat's nest lines that you see there. So basically, I'm, I'm trying to route the tracks kind of around each other and trying to work them into little cracks and things to try to get everything working. I even move some components because I feel as though they might be better suited elsewhere. And, you know, I always I'm fighting with whether I should move a track over one way or make room for another track or whatever. It's very um, it's kind of like a different approach to things. It's very it's, it's very different routing a PCB compared to pretty much any other skills you have, but it's lots of fun. You should try it, because even if I failed here, I just, uh, you know, decide to go a different route and keep going. What I've decided to do is I don't think it'll be possible to have a single-sided board. So this has now become a double-sided board and it will have a ground plane on the back. So we'll grab, grab the back copper and we're going to do a fill. I'm uh, going to change the grid like 50 mils. Back copper, ground, sort of like this. There we go. Back copper, now ground. Front copper now. And we can uh, just remove the visuals. There we go. Now we're going to deal with the front copper. And since we now have the double side, we don't have to worry too much about routing our traces. Um, and I think we have to do, might have to like right click this fill, might have to go like re, re pour or something like that. Don't know. We'll figure it out together. Okay. So now let's do the same thing. So this. I'll go out this way and into here. That is done. This and this. That's all connected. This guy will connect to here. Easy sauce. Let's try to make smarter decisions here. This one goes here. That's okay. It actually grabs 12 volts from anywhere. You know what? This might actually be better up top. Let's see if that fits better. If we move this to here, I have to change the grid again. Let's move this to here. Okay, where does this connect? Still connects down there. What if this moved down here? I think we're in a better position now. 
so let's connect here goes to here here goes to here here goes to here so this is ground needs to go to here yeah I'm not worried about that because the ground plane I need to re-pour the ground plane so I think zone unfill zone fill yeah there we go Oops, and I can actually, there we go. This is looking a lot better. So we're gonna move our lines here. Uh, this guy will also come up to here, because that is the same path. Um, this guy needs to make it over there. So we can go around kind of like that. And bring this up to here, like that. This guy still needs to cross, but we can add a via to do that now. Um, that's easy. We we'll go over this way, and we can via over to this, or we can go around this cap like that. So that's not too bad. This guy needs to connect down here. It's okay. There we go. That's ground. So basically, we need um, only a couple of vias. So we need. Actually, we don't even need a via. What we could do is go into our back layer. Uh, we're going to. Well, let's finish. Actually, let's just finish this layer before I do anything. Here to here, here to here. Okay, two unconnected traces at the moment. But all we need to do is go into our back layer and go across, and then this one, go across, and that's it. Everything is now connected. And so I can just grab this, right click, zones, unfill, right click, um, zones, fill, and then we should have, there we go, let's, er, let's remove our front copper, so we see the back copper, all of this is a ground plane, there's a little bit of loop area, sort of around this, I'm not too worried, and that is our basic setup. Now I think I'm going to do a front fill as well simply because uh, more copper is better. I don't I don't see a, a reason not to have copper and I'll do that for the 12 volt section plus 12 volt net okay here whoops that's the back copper made a mistake front copper here, 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 and here. Oh, was the other one? Yeah, I think. Yeah, okay. I think now it's okay. Oops. Front copper, 12 volt. There we go. There, there and there and there and then zones fill all and let's see what our front copper looks like there we go it's connected there a little bit of a loop not too concerned so we've got that done I wonder if we can bring the edge cuts in 
but I, th I think that would be playing with fire. That's nice. Um, we can actually remove our traces going to the 12 volt. So let's see. I'm going to delete the 12 volt rail because now it'll be done with a pour. See there, see the, the, the name of the net? See, plus 12 volt, you can just delete everything that's there. Net, net, net. Plus 12 volt, okay. Now, zones here, zones, unfill all here, zones, fill all. And then we can actually look at, this is our front pour, and that's our back pour. And there we go. So that is the basics of making your own circuit board, and this is where we're going to leave it for now. In the next video, we're going to adjust the silk screen, make things the way we want them to look, basically. And then we're going to um, export this. And I think I'm going to upload it to JLC PCB just to see what they have to offer, how much is it going to cost, uh, etc. And then, I don't know, maybe we'll make an, an order. Thanks again for watching. Catch you next time.